There is a lot said about discrimination against people living with HIV. But in your opinion, what exactly is this discrimination? In a few lines, give me your opinion about it, starting now, please. My name is Sally. In our class, there are 97 students. Miss Opoku is our family life education teacher. And she does everything she can to prepare us for life. She tells us all the time that we are the future of our country. She treats us like responsible individuals. We love her. Very good work, Sally. Thank you, miss. In general, from what I've seen, you all have a good understanding of discrimination. I'm very pleased. Before we move on, are there any questions? Miss? Yes, John? Miss, have you ever seen anybody who has good AIDS? Why do you ask that question? Because some people say they don't believe in AIDS. Because they've never seen anyone who has AIDS. As you're all aware, the only way of finding out if a person is infected with the virus that causes AIDS is for them to take an HIV test. That said, I personally have known people who have HIV and they live with HIV. And I can guarantee that everyone in this class, all of you, knows a minimum of at least one person living with HIV. Ms. Opoku is a friend of my family. She's been living in our compound since she arrived in town a few years ago, after her husband died. She and I spend a lot of time together. I didn't really understand when you said that all of us knew a person living with HIV. Sally. I think I know you well enough to know that I can count on your discretion. Your parents know about it already, and I thank them with all my heart for everything they've done for me. I think now it's time for you to know too. Sally, my husband died of AIDS. The doctor said he needed the latest treatment modern medicines which can slow down the illness's progress. They would have helped my husband live longer. But they were too expensive. We didn't have the money. And my husband died. Yes, you already know somebody living with HIV. It's me. As a friend and teacher, she's too precious. We can't just lose her. She's always telling us not to give up when we encounter obstacles. She says that if we want to change things, we must have the courage to act. President's personal secretary, please. I wonder, can I come and see you? It's about a letter which I believe is extremely important. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. In order to overcome the epidemic of HIV AIDS, it is necessary for every citizen to commit themselves tirelessly to the fight. It is the duty of everyone to make his or her contribution 
and to participate actively in the debate. This press conference is an ideal opportunity to bring to your attention a letter which gives an example of the kind of commitment we require from every citizen of our country. And now, the letter will be read by its author, Miss Sally Akutu. Eh? Hmm? Sally? Sally? I don't believe it. I'm astonished. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Go ahead. This is my letter. Mr. President, I write this letter to express a feeling of pain. Yes, Mr. President, I feel great pain when I see someone I hold dear suffering from AIDS on our planet. Does one have to be rich in order to have the right to live in good health? I feel pain because today I know there are medicines which make it possible for people living with the AIDS virus to be healthier and live longer even if there is no cure yet. But the medicines are still too scarce and expensive. I'm begging, Mr. President, I send you a cry of despair from the bottom of my heart. I beg you to use your power to enable people in need to have these medicines. If we can't afford to do it, we must request other countries to help us. Thank you very much, Mr. President. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Akutu. I tell you now that I commit myself to do all I can and spare no effort. Once again, thank you. Good morning, class. Good morning, Mr. Sabu. 